Welcome back to The Ed Show. The battleground story tonight, the Republicans versus progress. Now, the Senate brought the country and the military into the 21st century this weekend with the historic vote to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell. They did it without the help of two senators from Arizona, who I think are pretty much frozen in time, John McCain and John Kyle, tag team to take a last stand on behalf of bigotry in America. Well, the vote was in the bag, but McCain was determined to fight until the last minute to keep discrimination against gay and lesbian service members. I'm aware that this vote will probably pass today in a lame duck session. Uh, and, I, and there'll be high fives all over the liberal bastions of America. I hope that when we pass this legislation, that we will understand that we are doing great damage. And we could possibly and probably as the Commandant of the Marine Corps said, and I've been told by literally thousands of members of the military, harm the battle effectiveness, which is so vital to the support, to the survival of our young men and women in the military. The other Arizona Senator, John Kyle, took it a step farther on Fox News, claiming the repeal could cost American lives. It could disrupt unit cohesion, and as the Commandant said, cost lives. That means a lot to me. Now, Kyle, McCain, and other righties are clinging to the words of Marine Corps Commandant John Amos, who opposes repeal. Now, Amos, uh, entitled, obviously entitled to his opinion, but he's really off on his own on this one. The military experts are against him. Amos was nominated to the post by the Navy Secretary, Ray Mavis, who supported repeal. And Defense Secretary Robert Gibbs, who also supports repeal. Amos answers to the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Mike Mullen, who supports repeal. And the Commander-in-Chief, of course, President Barack Obama, who has always supported repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Well, on Wednesday, President Obama will sign the repeal into law and put to end a sad chapter in this country's history. For more, let's bring in Mike Rogers, gay activist, blogger, and also Christopher Barron, chairman of Go Proud. Gentlemen, good to have you with us tonight. Um, Mike Rogers, how, how big a deal is this for the gay community, seeing that President Obama very patiently said, we're eventually going to get there, and it was the gay and lesbian community who was very impatient about it all. Or correct me, what do you think? Well, I think that there was obviously reason that the gay and lesbian community wanted to push forward on this to make sure it happened now because certainly the next House of Representatives has absolutely no desire in promoting equality in this country. So I think it was a great win for the president. He made a statement uh, when he ran, which this policy will end under my watch, and it will. Uh, it's a great victory for Democrats, and of course a big loss for the Republicans who are counting on their base and that little 20% of the population that they let down. The Republicans clearly let down their base in this one. Well, Again, yeah, Chris Barron, you're smiling on this. What's wrong with the move? <laughs> Nothing's wrong with the move. The move is fantastic, and it's, it's great for Democrats. It's great for Republicans. It's great for our military. It's great for the American people. Opinion poll after opinion poll show the overwhelming majority of Americans support repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Even a majority of Republicans support repeal of Don't but Ask, yet, Don't Chris, Tell. And Chris, what's, what's, more, fight, what's most, what's most Chris, important is it's in the best interest of our United States military. And that's I agree with you, matter. Chris. So and that's why question. it's such a great thing. Chris, Chris, here's my question to you. If your party and if you personally believe it's the best thing for our country, why under your leader, George W. Bush, who you endorsed, were over 700 people <laughs> per year tossed out, while under President Obama, under 430? So we know first off, that there first, can be a few... Off, excuse Mike, me, I let Go you Proud speak. didn't exist when, when I let George you, Bush was president. So I, we couldn't have endorsed I let him. you... Well, the gay Republicans overall supported him. You did support John McCain. <laughs> who stood up and vociferously, vociferously argued against this when the very first man who was injured in the Iraq war was a man by the name of Eric Alva, a gay service member who lost his legs, lo lost a leg. So again, it's more of the same. It's too little. It's too late. Uh, you know, who did what in the past, da, da, da. But the bottom line is, eight years under Bush, 780 people on average were tossed from the military. That number basically got cut in half under President Obama. Mike. And under his leadership, it has now been overturned and repealed. Mike, so as an Air Force 
not as, sure. an, as, as a veteran of the United States Air Force Reserves, I think this is a tremendous thing, a tremendous thing for our country, a tremendous thing for our Absolutely. military. Absolutely, and it and was done what? without you. There are, there it was, was done no, without, without done the without conservative us. base. And, no, it was not done without. First off, conservatives like Dick Cheney, conservatives like Charles oh, Crouch, please, Hammers, too little, like too Rudy late, Giuliani, Chris. People who are out, like out of Ambassador office, John Pol Bolton, Chris. People uh, okay. who are out of office, Senator please. Pat Finally, former head of the gentlemen, hold on. Christopher Barron, let me ask you, uh, what about John McCain? What about John Kyle? What about the Bush administration? This, Aren't they so far off the mark on this? This was John McCain's Terry Schiavo moment. This was the self-destruction of an otherwise distinguished career. I've spoken to Senator McCain about this issue. I spoke to him about it in 2005. I spoke to him about it in 2008. I can tell you from my own personal conversations with Senator McCain that what I saw on the floor of the Senate did not reflect what Senator McCain has said about this issue in the past, and it's a disgrace. Like well, I said, this was his Terry Schiavo and, moment. And what it shows, right. Ed, is that people like that can talk to John McCain, can yap, yap, yap all they want on the right, but the bottom line is, is the promises are hollow. Former elected officials like Dick Cheney, sure, it's easy for him to stand up. He doesn't report. Mike, to you the wouldn't people. have gotten this without Republican votes. Well, that's actually so, I not mean, true. I, if you look at it, a majority. Yes, it is a. a it, Chris, it's not true. You needed 60 votes. You needed 60 votes. It is a. It, there's no right. question. It's a hot topic. Mike Rogers, Christopher Barron, uh, thanks for joining us tonight.